I think we are live. Hello, hello, Internet. How is everybody this evening? I hope you are well. Herman's working on the background music right now. We're still getting organized here. We just walked in the door two minutes ago, so. Hey, there's a, a really cool, what, what's it called now? It's not called Roundabout Brewery anymore. It's called Coven. Coven. <laughs> they were playing Deacon Blues in, inside when I oh, went I in at the that. end there. It's a great record. I'm sorry. I know. Maybe, no, it's a great maybe, album. I, I'm a fan. Maybe Steely Dan is not proper or properly, you know, hipster. I don't know. I know they. I know they. You know, micromanaged their records, and uh, you know, took forever to put them out. But they are great records. I like them. I like Steely Dan. I'm not going to apologize. Heliospherical dread says bzzz on the sides. I don't know what that means. Are you hearing sounds? Yeah. How sound? Does everything sound okay? I hope so. Create Audio noticed that I got a haircut. Thanks, Create. I did it to impress you. <laughs> what's what's the uh, anti-drug uh, show uh, um, commercial where they said, where did you learn to do this? And he says, I learned it by watching you. <laughs> <laughs> right. I did it to impress you. I do, I do have a, a story with this haircut. I... I I went to a new place to get a haircut because uh, up until this point, I've got my haircut at Supercuts for, I don't know, 40 years, 40, as long as I can remember, I've had. We, we talked about hair. Yeah, last, last time. time. Yeah. Um, so, but Supercuts is basically closed around here now, so I had to find a new place. So I went to the fancy place that my son went to once, and um, I went in, and it was fine. You know, you go in, they offer you a. Would you like a water? How about a sparkling water? No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. And I, he gave me a fancy haircut. I thought he didn't do the best. It doesn't matter. Um, and I was totally happy with the haircut. But then I went to pay. And he he ran my card. And there was nowhere to offer a tip. And I didn't bring any cash. So it was a very awkward moment where I'm like, well, all right, I'll, I'll get you on the tip next time. I didn't know you had to tip in cash. He goes, yeah, our computer doesn't take credit card tips. So I felt guilty, although now that I think about it, I'm like, that's not my fault. That's your fault. Um, but anyway, so I I went home and I, I told Danielle, I said, hey, I'm going to go to the bank machine because I was going to a concert that night anyway. I said, so I'm going to go to the bank machine and take out some money. And then I'm going to walk down and give this guy a tip. And then I'm going to come back and eat some dinner, and then I'm going to go to this concert. Okay. So I uh, I went to the Rite Aid around the corner from my house, and took out some money, and I bought a Twix <laughs> because there's two little candy bars and a Twix, and Danielle had one, and I had one, and we ate it as we were walking down to the hair place. And I had put in my right pocket my wallet with all all the money minus $10 I had pulled out from when I got my change from the Twix bar. Okay. I put that in my left pocket with my phone so that when I walked in, I wouldn't have to fumble with my wallet. I could just give the guy a tip. And, and we got about the place I got my haircuts, maybe three blocks from my house. So we got to the block that the place is on. And I reached into my pocket and realized that the $10 had evaporated. Wow. It must have, I must have at some point pulled my phone out on the walk and it just gone into the wind forever. So, uh, Oh yeah. I found 10 bucks on Walnut Street. <laughs> I guess that was you. Lucky you. Um, so in the end I decided, uh, that, um, I wasn't going to give him a tip. That I feel like I tried. You'll get it next time. And, yeah, I don't think I'm going to go back there next time. It wasn't good? No, he didn't do... I realized when I got home, like, two days later, that he didn't do my neckline. So you're looking for a new barber. Again, yes. So this is now... 
I feel like this is going to be a story that I tell every month or so. It's like, hey, national still looking for a new barber. Well, you know, the thing is, the thing that's funny is that people comment on your hair a lot. I know, which is really uh, strange. It's very strange. I I I actually felt self conscious about my hair because of your hair, and I feel like, what am I doing? Do I need a hat? Do I need a? Do I need to up my game somehow? See, and my hair does whatever it wants. I don't brush it. I don't. It is what it is. It's it's its own being. I am merely a place for it to be. You are, but a what's the word? I'm a carrier. You're 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 but a canvas. I'm a host. You're a canvas. I'm a host. I, I'm a canvas. Yes. Um, do we have any <laughs> product to talk about? Do we have any product to talk about? Like hair products? I don't use no, hair no, products. No, synthesizer products. Synthesizer. Oh, that's right, because this is a synthesizer show. And we're a synthesizer company. Uh, where are you with uh, modules? Where am I with modules? Well, we have... Um, I'm like the Robin to your Howard Stern. You're good at this. <laughs> you're keeping me on track. Uh, okay, well, let's talk about Pittsburgh Modular modules for a moment. We have... Um, we still have all of the Safari modules. Most of them are still in stock, thank goodness. Yeah, what's what's available? What do we have? The ones that are sold out are the Giraffe, um, the Crows, obviously. The Filter of Crows is sold out. And the Flamingo is sold if out. If anybody needs a Crow, I'm selling each one for $666. Nice. They're very rare. Nice. <laughs> is that before you mod them or afterwards? I guess if you're going to no, sell them, you is, probably should. as is. Okay. Modding is eight hundred and eighty eight dollars. Are you gonna sign them for an extra thousand mm-hmm. dollars? Yeah. Okay. No, a thousand even. One thousand one hundred and eleven dollars is signed. Nice. You're just clearing house. Herman's also selling some uh, bedroom furniture. <laughs> Which is also very nice. Um Yeah, so but everything else is pretty much uh still available. All the drum sounds are still there. Uh all the scary modules minus the filter are still available. No oh, filter of crows is gone. Filter of Crows is gone. Wow. Yeah, um, I figured I didn't have the right to ask for a Filter of Crows because I have six crows. Oh, you didn't get one? It's okay. I was just going to say there was one left, but I decided to claim it as my own. But if you don't have one, I'll make sure it's yours. Because I have two. I don't want to be, you know, I just want to stay humble. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, there, there was one left uh, that we had set aside for somebody that uh, asked us to hold some. So, but we ended up when they bought, we ended up accidentally grabbing from the main pile. Okay. Uh, so I have one for you. We'll talk about it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, new stuff coming out. We have the next batch of modules is all utility modules. So we have two versions of the Okapi mixer and the Koi malt modules will be next. We are waiting for the panels to arrive for those. I don't know when that's going to be. I don't know. Um, we also have the cases. Yeah, when when are the cases land? Are they they're up? They're up. They're out. They're ready. The cases are. All of our back end stuff is you know they we can build them now. Um, we have all the hardware. We have all of the power supplies. That type of stuff. It's just gonna. It just comes down to at this point, me writing, taking some pictures, writing some copy, and I was gonna do a quick little oh, okay. video talking to Justin. Justin is uh, the very talented person that builds all of our cases for us. Uh, he has a wood shop in the basement of our building. It does an absolutely beautiful job. Um, we had. In the past, the way structure cases worked was we had an employee at Pittsburgh Modular that would take empty wood shells that Justin would build and would fill them with all the electronics and test them and whatnot. Um, but that employee left the company about a year ago or so, so Justin has really stepped up, and now Justin does almost everything. He, he does all the woodworking, um, all of the stuffing of the rails and the power supplies he does all the testing um and then we come into work monday morning and our packing area is filled with beautiful smelling new cases which then 
Ross boxes up and ships out. And, and the, what, and what case is this here? Let's let's talk about this briefly. This is the 360. Okay. Yes, I, I was using one of the new cases for the past several live streams, but we did an event in Pittsburgh last weekend where I had to pare it down to a 208 um, so people could come and poke at it. And I, I was worried because the the new case I had was I needed to take pictures of it. And I was worried about taking it to an event that was sort of really public facing. And it was a demo unit at that point. So I put some stuff in a 208. And then today, as I went in to grab it, I'm like, you know what, 208, there's not enough stuff in there for what I want to do tonight. So I took everything out and put it in a 360, and I figured, because I need to use the prototype new cases to take pictures and everything, so I figured this is the way I'll go. So this is my 360. How, um, how much time did it take you to to lay that out? Oh, it didn't take any time at all. You know, it, to, to screw the stuff in took me maybe an hour. Okay. But I knew exactly what I wanted in there. And I don't really care anymore what order stuff is in or anything, so I don't pay. I don't spend any time doing that, because I rebuild my cases so often that to waste time on that kind of stuff is just ridiculous to me. To me, um, so this case will probably get torn down in the next week. I don't okay. Know. So we have a couple um, questions. Uh, Bill Smith demands toads. What's the uh Toad isn't in production yet. Toad, which I have right here, the Toad, that will be going into production with Local Parks Oscillator. They're both ready for production. All right, because someone also asked about Local Parks parks release. Date. Yeah, they're both ready for production. I don't know if Perry has flipped that switch yet or not. Um, he may have. I just noticed he spent a bunch of money on Mauser, so maybe that was the parts for these guys. I'm not sure. Um, but those will be... That's the next round. Uh, I, because we have an instrument coming out um, fairly soon at this point, I don't know if those modules will be bumped to next year or not. Yeah, but next year's not that far away. No, it's really not. Uh, but they're they're next, and they're they're done, and they're ready to go. Um, yeah, I mean, I think to clarify, the thing that you said is that the arc of the production is longer. Now, the pr pr the production uh, assembly line is For now longer because the amount of of uh, things being produced is larger. For instruments, yeah. yes, it's very different. Uh, working with Create on the instruments side is v a very different process than the modules, which we still do the modules the same way we've done them for the past 12 years. Um, so we can churn out modules very quickly. Uh, manufacturing modules takes six weeks from the moment we email them the files until the day they send us a FedEx shipping notice takes exactly six weeks and it's been that way forever. Working with the manufa the much larger scale manufacturing that we're doing uh, with the guys that create is, is a very different process and rightfully so because we are making a lot more instruments. So it's, it's a lot more involved, a lot more of uh, checks and balances and making sure that Everything is right every step along the way. And because we had never done that before, it it's taken us some time to understand how that process works and to sort of get into the flow of it. Now, we did that with the East Beast and the West Pest. We did that with uh, yeah, Big I mean, O. We did that with Function Junction. So we're getting much better at it, but it's still a process that has to go through for every single instrument. I mean, what would you say the, the timeline between conception, discussion of the West and East instruments was from the beginning to the time I mean you're talking about a year and a half it was two least. years two years yeah. yeah it was two years for the East Beast and West Pest it was about a year for Captain Big O and about 10 months for Function Junction uh, the Pittsburgh instrument that's going to come out in the next soonish um, 
that's working on three years at this point. Voltage Jeez. Lab 2 is, by the time it comes out, will be three and a half years. Um, some things are going to take less time. The instrument, we've got so much stuff happening right now. Uh, the drum machine, for example. Here's a good example. The drum machine, which I've talked about before in previous live streams. Um, <laughs> I just sent Herman pictures of the mm. first... Mm. Uh, we call them HMS, handmade samples. So the first handmade samples, uh, I don't have them yet, but uh, the the place that built them sent me pictures, and they're they're gorgeous. Yeah, I'm selling pictures of the handmade <laughs> samples. If you want, if you want exclusive photos, uh, my cash app. Are these also six hundred and sixty six dollars and sixty six cents? No, they're much more. <laughs> no, but this is a good example because that's something that we, to get to this point, has taken, I'm going to say, six months. So it's been very fast to this point. But because we're so backlogged with three other full instruments, um, the drum machine, we're still looking at, realistically, this is not going to come out for another year, year and a half. It's crazy. And it's, it's just sort of how it is. So, you know, it exists. It's physical, and it's still a year and a half away mm. from being able to send it to the world. So it's it's a much longer process. But now you can understand why we're doing these Safari modules because we've been really excited about these drum sounds, and we've been f working on these drum sounds, and it's been that's where our mind has been. So because of that, we thought, well, the modules are a great way to allow you guys into our sort of psyche at the moment and what we're working on at the moment. And also, you know, we, it's nice because then we can get some feedback like, hey, this is really working or, hey, this isn't what I expected, that kind of stuff. And, and it helps us as we're working on the larger instruments to say, okay, we need to tweak this or we need to make sure this does this or that does that. And I have a lot of nice side conversations with people uh, that I'll see at either trade shows or via email that do provide some really interesting and really positive feedback uh, to make sure that the instruments that we're working on are really going to hit exactly the way we want them to hit. Uh, because it's important because, again, we're not making, um, like in the past with, say, the SV-1, you know, we would do those in batches of 200 or 300. Um, we're not doing that with the new stuff. You know, we're going to make a lot of these things, and we need to make sure that they're awesome. And I think Herman can test because Herman has had our new instrument now in his studio for two or three months. I think he can attest that mm. the thing is good. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, so th that's, that's sort of a little insight into what we're doing. Um, what I've been doing specifically the last couple of weeks is, uh, we, well, tomorrow's going to be a fun day because Michael's Johnson's going to be in the shop and we're going to, we're troubleshooting some noise in a mixer, which ugh, there's nothing more painful than looking at a circuit and saying, this is right. But then when you listen to it, it's not right. Hmm especially a circuit that we've used 20, 30, 40 times. So tomorrow's going to be a fun day troubleshooting that stuff because I always have a, a wonderful time sort of bantering with Michael as we well, sort of hash Michael, out Michael Johnson is a national treasure. Oh, absolutely. He is. He and a, is. And a, and a, a beautiful mind. He is. A beautiful mind. <laughs> we, I had a conversation with him uh, last week. He came into the shop or two weeks ago he came into the shop and we were working on something and he said he was listening to us talk about whether he listens to the live streams or not. And he said, he said, why would said, I listen to that? No, he said, I wanted to comment, but then he had to sign up for a YouTube account and he said that was too much of a barrier <laughs> for him to jump into the, the live stream. But he, he may be watching right now. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to do that tomorrow, which will be fun because Perry will get involved and we'll solve a problem. Hopefully the last problem for this other project that we're working on. 
But then on Friday, Michael and I are going to go to uh, Frick Park, uh, Blue Slide Park, sorry, Sh- Shenley. No, that's Frick. We're going to go to Frick Park and we're going to film the talking bits for the introduction video for the new synth, which will be super cool. I've already done 10 uh, sort of teaser little one minute teaser videos some we're not going to do 10 before the announcement we're probably going to do four or five before the announcement over the course of a week so we'll do the first teaser on a tuesday and then there'll be a week and then the next tuesday we're going to do the the launch video and that's what i'm working on now um and then i'll have a bunch of videos coming out over the however long but the videos are absolutely absurd um but we're still we're trying to i want you guys understand what this thing sounds like because it's 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 a different, very modern um, it's a new, instrument it's that a really beast. it's a new beast. Yeah, and it it really the the instrument really focuses on the inventions that we've added to synthesis, all the innovations that Michael and I have added to the collective mountain of knowledge in synthesis. Uh, this is a this is this instrument really showcases those well. So it's been fun making these videos. It's been fun playing with the instrument. Really doing the soundtracks has been the best part because I've really got to dive in and dig into this in a way that's not trying to fix it or trying to find problems. It's really just putting on my creative hat and allowing the instrument to guide me to cool sounds and, uh, cool little soundtrack bits so it's it's been an absolute blast to do that thing yeah well i think herman yeah, um let's do it i think it's been 20 minutes i've i could jibber jabber all night but i think we should make some weird sounds for a while yeah, sound good sign off and um unfortunately the my gear is the same although i am using the orban spring reverb tonight so look out for springy noises yeah, and, and thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. It's it's definitely awesome. Oh, Hel- Heliospherical Dread said, is the Koi a 1 and 3 times 3? Yes, it is. It's a 1 to 3 times 3 with uh, normal connections between the inputs, so it could be 1 to 9 or 1 to 6 or 1 to 3 times 3. But it has LEDs. It's not, you know, what are you going to do with... And it's all buffered. Um, what are you going to do with them all? It looks cute. It has a Koi on it, too.
Break time. Uh, tell me when I have my camera good. I can see you, Herman. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Looking good. That went all over the place. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, in the comments, put down the timestamps that you liked. Just kidding. <laughs> um, two hours, 14 minutes, and 12 seconds. I really heard a nice sound there. Yeah, because I always go back. Um, Richard doesn't listen to the streams, but I actually always do. And I watch them and try to think about what I did so I can do it again. No, when you tell me to listen to it, I do it. I usually don't do it on my own, though. But if you tell me to go back, I will go back and listen to it. I put it on last week. I put it on because you, you told me it was good. So I put it on and listened to it one night as I was uh, working on a script. Okay. So it sunk in. Yeah. I, I absorbed it. I, I took yeah. it in. I wrapped it around me. I feel like, honestly, it, it sounds cliche, but I feel like since COVID and us starting that live stream and then me being trapped in my studio while we were being kicked out of our building and that sort of desperate winter, I feel like that was the most time that I spent digging into modular because I had sort of slacked off over, not slacked off, but just kind of gotten out of a practice for like five years, I think. Well, you have a job, and you have now. Now, to be fair, your job is is uh, is wide ranging and interesting. But you still you use this music equipment to solve problems, and you need solutions. So, modular a lot of the time for you isn't the best solution. But I think what did it for you and what made it really click is when you found the iPad. Yeah. Drambo is it for me. And um, you've really streamlined your modular as well to mm -hmm. it's essentially a drum machine at this point. It's a four voice and the uh, Bastel, um, I always forget the name of it, Knit Rider. It's great, but I can do so much more in Drambo. And it makes so much more sense. Honestly, the last three, probably five streams that we've done, that thing has just been running and not sequencing anything. It looks nice. Yeah, I mean, it's like all of your uh, snakes going like... Yeah. <laughs> Visually, it's cool. I used my snakes um, at the end of our little jam there. Okay. I decided I was going to be a drummer, too. Th that was your hi-hat pattern? That was... Yeah. That's I, great. I played some hi-hat. And before that... Herman shouted over to me that he was using the elephant and I thought, well, shit, I have an elephant too. I'm going to use my elephant. So <laughs> for a while we were just, our elephants were, uh, were dancing together. But I, I, I was doing this very crazy low kicky, kicky thing, kick drum mm -hmm. thing. And I had a crow filter on it, just rolling off all the high end that I was doing minimal FM. And it was just like an 808 ish kind of drop thing. And then, at one time, I was not getting as much low end, and then I, I increased the sustain and changed the tuning, and all of a sudden it just went, and yeah. then got thick. Um, it'll do that. I was doing this. I don't know if it'll. This is the sound I was making. Right. You had like a little bongo-y thing going, and then I completely changed the tuning of the elephant, and I got this really high, like a, like a syndrome-ish kind of sound but with FM so it had a lot of harmonics to it uh -huh. and it was you heard that thing cutting right across the mix yeah it sounded great yeah and, and I had a I had a um, the crow filters after it in low pass mode so I was rolling off all the high end for the kick, kicky thing and then I opened it up all the way for the space drummy FM thing and it was a completely different thing I see so not trying to sell elephants but you know, the drum machine one day will do all that for you. Yeah, the drum machine has two of them in it. Right, I didn't want to say, so I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Here's a picture of it right here. <laughs> no! No, no, that's the, that's the live stream. <laughs> Wait, is this making a feedback loop? 
Um, if it is, it's very small. No. It is fun to try. I'm sure it is, but I can't see it. I probably just screw up the focus. Um, once again, we're using these um, um, EV mics. What's the name of the damn thing? ND96. It's so all microphones to me, Herman. Let me know if we're achieving uh, SM7B, RE20-ish range. Do we sound good? Yeah. Do we sound podcasty? I think we don't, but I think these work. I, I, think like, the, I, I like the profile. I'll yeah. talk like this. Yeah, they have good low end. I think this is where we need to be. This is my radio podcast voice. Your NPR voice. My NPR voice. My, my father-in-law actually was a DJ uh, professionally and then a voiceover actor for the majority of his career. And he, that's what he sounds like all the time. Just when you're, he'll, he'll ask, you know, hey, let me show you this thing on my iPhone. <laughs> it's, it's surreal. He has just, it's, his voice is so musical and it's so good. I met him a few times at your place. And he just, he just talks and it's a very musical, anything he's talking about sounds good. <laughs> Very, very strange. Um, yeah, so I, I, I like that jam. I wasn't. There was a couple times you wanted to quit, and I was like, no, no, no. I like this. No, Let's I thought, keep going. I, I thought it was, or is it getting boring? But apparently, it probably was to somebody, but not yeah. to me. I was enjoying it, and I, I had fun. I was. I have basically two sounds here. I'm using each of the sequencer um, to control them. One of the sounds is the local parks through a filter, through a low-pass gate, and the phaser and the delay, and the other one is a big O, which the big O is still, I think, my favorite Eurorack oscillator ever. And I, I'm biased a little bit because I designed. Yeah. <laughs> but, but... It's so good at being really clean if you want clean. But then at the same time, you can just destroy things with it if you want to. And it's and it just agrees with whatever you're doing. It's so happy to do it. <laughs> um, so I have a big O, and I'm taking the sine wave out into the flamingo here. And then I'm going out of the flamingo back into the big O into the wave folder simulating a circuit from the Voltage Lab 2 and coming out of there into a filter, into a low-pass gate, into a delay, and into the output. So I have a lot going on. Then I'm modulating the Flamingo in a couple different ways just to create a nice percussive-y... Um, arpeggiated hit kind of sound. So I have those two sort of arpy things and they're they're sort of playing with each other and they sound similar but not enough and it, and they've they've I feel like they've worked against each other really well tonight. And then I've used the East Beast on and off as a baseline. Um I've also been using the Big O as a baseline. So it's been sort of bouncing between the two of those which the baseline was. And then I have a second big O, which I'm just taking the wave fold out and going direct. Well, I'm going through a, a mixer to attenuate it. So a wait, the bit. wave fold out just means the wave fold or output of that. Yeah, it's a sine wave. It's internally routed, so you have the sine wave into the wave folder. Is there somewhere to get out after that? You can well, the wave fold out is the last stage okay. of that. But there's also the overdrive, so you could patch the output of the wave folder into the overdrive. But it's it's normal to be the triangle into the overdrive, not the wave folder. Uh, but I'm taking the wave folder out, and I'm going into an attenuator, and then just going into my mixer down here. And I'm using that to just do this sound. And I've used this sound on and off. Wait, are you modulating the wave folder with something? I am. It, so it's it, moving around a little bit. It has an it has an external input for the. There's not. Of course, there's not. A, there's not an LFO on there. There's not a. No, 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 no. There's no, no. no LFO in in the Big O. It's. I'm using. 
the function generator from one of the function junctions as an LFO. So I could play with the tempo of it. Um, but I'm using that sort of as a drone, and I bring that up sort of to barely audible, and it sort of fills in all the holes. Once we kind of get a groove going, it, it's kind of the glue that's been holding everything together because the grooves as they were were all relatively disjointed and kind of bizarre which i i think is totally fine um, but that kind of pulls everything together when i just add a little bit of this to it mm, okay. and i've played with the frequency of it um this and that and i was also at the beginning using the local parks in a very similar way but the local parks has an octave switch so i would use that to jump up um, an octave. And I think at one point, the first time I did it, you looked over at me wondering if I was doing something or if we suddenly had a noise. Yeah, that's the funny thing about <laughs> <laughs> that's the funny thing about this because you get so lost in the sauce. Um, I generally somebody made a nice comment saying that they noticed that I was really working the console. I think I'm really working the mixing board, which is a um, Allen and Heath um, 14.4.2 mix, mix Wizard. I, I love it. It's so, it has everything on it. And it sounds great. Um, but sometimes we can't tell where a sound's coming from. Uh, because I can't stop and do like a, you know, pre fade or listen or something or isolate the channel because I don't want to mess up the stream and I don't want to put headphones on. So, yeah, some there's been times when we've looked at each other and saying, are you doing that weird thing or is that feedback or whatever because i do i do also do feedback on this board where i'll um route effects back to themselves so occasionally i have a limiter on there but occasionally it'll you know spaz out if i'm feeding a reverb or delay back to itself but yeah there are definitely times where we can't even tell where the hell something's coming from well and a lot of times you are messing with my sounds yeah so and i so i'm not sure if I'm creating feedback, or if you're running me through the distortion and overdrive, um, eventually I figure it out because you tend to push things. Um, so it, but there's there's a moment where you start to do it where I'm like, wait, is everything going to shit here? What's going on? Yeah. So I'm I'm using <laughs> this this uh, I always forget the name of it. Yeah, Matthews Broker because it's a two channel two stage distortion that you can switch the order of the circuits and i just love what it does to synths like especially rich rich's um super bright droney wailing sounds that he seems to specialize in they just i'm a because, professional herman well because <laughs> just speak briefly about this and we'll go back to some music but last week we actually no no we need to solve this okay talk through this okay Last week, we talked about this wide-open, two-gain stage distortion circuit, right? Mm hmm And how noisy it is, but how cool that is. Yeah. But it's completely different than wave folding. Wave folding doesn't really create... Because this thing is working on the audio path of the... In a mixer environment. So there's, there's like, hella chance for all every kind of stray voltage and noise that's in the mixer to find its way into this overdrive circuit which is probably amplifying sound by a factor of what between these two gain stages a lot significant amount yeah hundreds i don't know it's probably not hundreds but it's probably 30 40 right but it's also two separate overdrive circuits yeah. so when you do that it kind of just it allows in all of the channels and auxes and, you know, and uh, sections from a, a mixer, much like a guitar. When you, when you open up a distortion circuit, why they always have ga gates after them, or not all, always, but a, a lot of guitars put gates after them because you, you just can't help but you're opening them yourself up to so much stray noise, right? Yeah. So anyway, that's what's happening within the mixer because there's... Even if you turn off the send to the distortion, some of it gets there because it's, you know, it's just a gain stage that should not be in a mixer, right? So what you're saying is you're messing with my tone, man. 
Yeah. Because you're a tone quester. I'm a tone quester. That's what I, I, I have devoted my life to tone. Um, no, we'll never put out a vinyl record. <laughs> we were talking about this <laughs> at last week after we stopped the stream that uh, one of the guys from Create Audio said that, wow, you guys are sounding better and better. You're almost a band at this point. And I, and I said, we're like the laziest band in the world. Yeah. We pr- I guess we practice pretty often, but As, yeah. uh, we don't want to write any songs. We don't want to record any music. And uh, we're not trying very hard to go out of our way to perform live. <laughs> Right. But what I do love is just taking an evening and hanging out with Herman and hanging out with you guys on the on the web. This is super fun to me. And I, I don't know if we need to immortalize any of this stuff beyond what we're doing. Um, we'll see, but I, I suspect not. Speaking of things and performing live, I will be performing next week on the 22nd at Spirit with the New York Modular Society they are going on tour there's four or five of them um, and then two of us from Pittsburgh are going to perform I assume I'll be performing first or second it should be a lot of fun Spirit if you are from Pittsburgh and haven't been there it's a super cool place I'm guessing we'll be down in the basement, which is a uh, just a really... It's a cool place to hang out and listen to music. No, that, that basement space is really one of the best clubs in this area. It's, I, I've been upstairs where it's... Where, you know, if you don't have, like, the critical mass, it doesn't feel like enough. But that spot, like, if you get 50 people in there, it's great. Yeah, yeah. That, it's the same spot we used to do our synth playgrounds in. So... You know, if you have five people down there, it feels nice. And if you've got 100 people down there, it feels nice. So it's cool. So uh, on the 22nd next week, I'm going to be playing with a bunch of really good artists from New York Modular Society. And I'll talk about it again, and we're going to put up some social media stuff before that. Uh, But if you are in Pittsburgh and you want to come check it out, I don't think it's a whole lot of money to get in. But whatever it is, it's absolutely worth it because the artists that are coming to perform are fantastic. I'm going to do something. I'm, I'm hoping to do sort of a palate cleanser, sort of a, a zen moment for everyone before we take in all the goodness that you'll hear over the course of the night. So that's my commercial for the evening is I will be performing live and I will be trying and it should be pretty cool. <laughs> um, I want to send out special love to my bruv uh, Dub from Indigenous Resistance he's listening in again it's always such an honor to know that this transmission is going to the other side of the world it's crazy world we live in and that's a beautiful thing so not to get all trippy uh, let's get back to, into some music we're going to start with a kick drum and a drone a kick drum and a drone that's all you need isn't it I think so
uh, tell me my camera. Good? A little more. Boom. There you go. That's it. We did it. Well, this was a long... We played for a long time. It's after 11. Uh, normally, these things go 8 to 9, then we chat, and then we go 9 to 10. Uh, but somehow we've gone to a quarter after 11. And that's fine, because it's a jam. It's not a concert. Um, yeah, it's funny. <coughs> I always preface this with... If I tell friends that are not, like, specifically synth nerds, I'm like, look, you can tune in. Just feel free to skip through. <laughs> I won't take it personally. There's some good stuff. There's some weird stuff. There's some really bad stuff. There's also technical talk that you probably wouldn't care about. Yeah. That's all right. I, Speaking of good and bad, I think that last set was pretty fun. Yeah. There was some weird stuff in there. Tonight was, it always boggles my mind how different we are week to week. And tonight was very, for me, it was very sort of Berlin style, sequencery heavy. Um, because it's just so, it's so easy to to just do it. Um, and and when, you're, when you're managing the beats, as you were, it's... It's easy to fall into the, in just running the sequencers, and I kind of knew that coming into tonight. I I built this system earlier today, um, with that kind of in mind. It's I've been listening to a lot of that style of music this week, so hmm. maybe that has something to do with it. Although uh, earlier today I was listening to some. Uh, Emily Radigue, which is just drones, and beautiful, beautiful drones. Um, so who knows? I don't know, but I, I love that every week it's it's a little bit different. Some weeks is weirder than others. This the second certainly the second set wasn't particularly weird at all. I don't know. Listen back. It's there's some weird stuff in there. I don't know. We've gotten a lot weirder though in the past. I think what I need to do is just totally, the problem is, I, and maybe other people do this too, I tend to, certainly in a jamming situation, lean on my mental presets. And what I mean by that is, you know, I can patch up certain sounds without looking, and I know what they're going to sound like the second I turn them on, and I know they're going to give me some this thing so i tend to when we jam lean on those sounds because i know i don't have any preview yeah but you but you patch them from scratch and i do not i don't really you just, never change your you yeah. never but you're using it as a drum machine it's it's yeah. a little bit you know it's a different yeah. thing the only thing i'm doing is hold on I think I turn myself down we need more herman the only thing I'm Ooh, the only thing I did better. over the, over the course of this jam was patch the noise into the second CV input on the elephant to make it more snarish. At one point, you did say, "Oh, yeah. the noise." Yeah, which which is a really cool trick. It makes it very snarry. Which is the original Pollard syndrome, which the elephant is inspired by had a noise circuit, and there was a volume control to bring into the noise. And it, the noise then ran into the audio path and ran through the, you know, the envelope controlled the audio path. So you could use the Pollard syndrome as a snare drum. We decided not to include the noise in our circuit inspired by that because we had a snare drum and we had a dedicated cymbals circuit. Right. So we we're leaning more on the weird with it <clears throat> but you found a fantastic hack i don't know if it's a hack or not but you found a fantastic patch which is to use noise as a cv source mm. and, and it and it 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 just fuzzes it right up yeah and it, and it doesn't sound exactly like noise in the audio path but 
it's very you could I think it's actually a little bit better because it actually makes it sound a little bit like FM. That's what I was going to say. A a uh, an analog to this would be to use any oscillator and patch the noise into the FM input and then just run it through a short envelope and you're going to get you will be able to experience what Herman was doing. But I think it's a great a great way to do it. I just wanted to answer a quick question from Isaac Seven. Uh, two questions, actually. So, just real quick, uh, and for anyone that's heard this before, can you? Well, I won't. You don't need to see it. it basically, the iPad is running Drambo. Drambo is triggering four channels of drum synth in the modular through and through a CVOCD through MIDI, through my MIDI interface. So I'm not processing any external sounds from it. I'm triggering four voices of, of drums, a, a sort of a kick, low, pace, low pass gate sound kick, a polar bear snare, an elephant drum, and a narwhal cymbal module with crows after each one so I can do them in high pass or low pass mode. And then I'm running Borderlands, um, in this case, Borderlands, Koala Sampler, and what you're hearing now is Paul's Extreme Stretch, just as drone stuff. And then I have two, I have a Audio Damage Reverb, um, EOS 2, and then this analog delay, tape delay style delay, which is called KD7. No, K7D. And that is the extent of the iPad. but. This brings hella sequencing, and I have a um, knit rider that's actually running and not even doing anything right now. I think we should do a live stream one night where we don't do this. It's just you explain to me what you're doing on your iPad. And you explain to me what you're doing on your modular. <laughs> Let's do that. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll switch back and forth. I don't want to be <laughs> about just me. And then the other question was... No, because I, you know what I'm doing. No, I don't. I don't know what you're doing. No, I don't know what you're doing because <laughs> I look back at the stream later and I'm like, what the hell? Um, so the other question was, uh, they asked about the electric banana, which is in, uh, an old school mainstay Pittsburgh classic punk rock venue. Um, I can't remember the name. It was a couple that ran it. The guy's name was Johnny Banana. The, re the place was called the Electric Banana. And they had every punk rock band you can imagine from probably, I bet the late 70s throughout. Uh, I, have you ever seen any bands there? Yeah, it was, was sort of the punk rock version of the decade. Right. I mean, I saw, I think I saw Seven Seconds there. I saw a band called Tupelo Chain Sex. Uh, I know Black Flag <laughs> played there. I know Bad Brains played there. I mean, everybody played there. Did you ever? You played there? I played there. And the quick question, the quick story about that. I place played there was, once as well, but it was at the very, very end because I'm I'm a little bit younger than you. Yeah, but I played there in a, in about 1982 or three, and it was one of the worst gigs I ever did in my life. I mean, it was a horrible turnout, horrible sound, and just generally bad vibes. And. Um, Years later, did the owner pull a gun on you when you asked to no, get that, paid? No, that no, that's urban legend. I didn't. I wasn't dealing with the money that night, but that was the <laughs> urban legend. So at any rate, years later, I was in a reggae band that was playing at a freshman. Uh, what do you call it, like the opening welcome concert for the freshmen? What's that called? Um, well, I Pitt don't know. at Pitt. Pitt was having a like a you know orientation orientation party for all the freshmen, and the reggae band I was in at the time played and it was an incredible set and at the end of the show this kid comes up and he goes that was amazing you guys should play the electric banana sometime and i said look i am never playing the electric banana again that place is a shithole i had a horrible <laughs> gig there the owner is fucking oh, trash no. was that his kid <laughs> and he goes hey <laughs> that's my parents place <laughs> And I don't understand why they get such a bad rep. I mean, they've done a lot of cool things for the music scene. And I was like, look, I am really sorry. I don't mean to disparage your parents, but I had a terrible show there. And I know a lot of bands have had really negative experiences, but the place is classic. And, you know, a lot of great bands have played there. But I mean, I think every city 
has their version of that kind of bar. Um, my good friend of mine, uh, Chris Strollo, he used to be a, used to run sound back back around the same time at a place called Cedars, which was in Youngstown, Ohio, and it was like the same kind of joint. You know, same kind of experience. Can you fix our the the, resu- the the difference between our head sizes? That seems a little disorienting. No, I think I think that is these are actual size, Herman. No, you have a giant head and I have a tiny head. That's how it works, right? right I'm it's also weird that we're on the wrong side, because if I look at you, I'm looking the opposite direction. Maybe I can switch this. I'm going to try. All right, this is all me. Hi, everybody. I have to find <laughs> Herman again. Nope, that didn't work. All right, I've turned me off. Right. Now I'm going to turn me on. There we go. Now, if I look at you, it looks... I mean, this wouldn't matter to anybody. If it makes you more comfortable, Irvin. Okay. See, now if I look at you, it looks like I'm looking at you. Right. But, it's, op- is, but it's opposite for me when I look at, the, at that screen. We can't win. Yeah, I know. It's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> this was a super rambling thing. Uh, case solo. I don't know about that crazy. I have actually heard about an adult uh, performer named... What did he say his name was? I don't know. I played the banana once. No, 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 no. I just, I just wanted to jump back. Oh, to we're the, not talking about the banana I, anymore? I wanted to jump back to, so there was a, 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 a someone watching named Good Looking Honky. Oh. And they claim to be adult, hold on, Peter North. <laughs> they, they claim to be a adult film star Peter North. It's got to be a joke. There's no way that that person would be watching this live stream, but that he was He had some funny. funny comments, though. I'll give him he that. He did. And he had this thing with a sort of a thumbs up emoji and then a red high heel shoe. And emoji. the screwdriver. The Come screwdriver. on, that was funny. Yeah, yeah. That was really funny. funny. So I thought it was I thought that was classy. We've had some weird moments when people like sort of spammed our Yeah, we don't need to rehash that though. That's right, but I'm saying this wasn't that. I think this was No, this was, I think this was just I think it was handled well. If it was that person, that's awesome. If not, it was it was great either way. And that's fine. Yeah, so uh, anything else? Um, I didn't get to tell my banana story, but oh, that's, tell, no, let's hear that's your banana. fine. No, 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 no I want to hear fine. your electric banana story. Just go for it. Um, I don't know. I was in a band. Was it Pink Eye? No, no. I was in a band um, called Terran Held, and we, we would play the decade. We played the decade every week for probably two years. Every week? We played, yeah. We would play, maybe not every week, but every other week, certainly. And a lot of times it was every week. Um, it's wild. We were like the house band. It at, wasn't. It was the next decade at that point. Oh, at the decade. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, what year? I, 90, 95, 96. And you were playing drums? Yeah, I was playing drums. And it, what was the band called again? Terran Held. Terran held, which is a make made up word that uh, the singer made up, who has since passed. Oh. Um, but we played one show, one of our first shows at the Banana, and one person came to see us. One person. There was a bartender, one person watching us, and us. Was the owner? there Johnny no but I I I knew who the owner was from going to shows there who who have you who had you seen at the banana I had seen him and his wife oh what bands yeah what what bands I can't just shitty punk bands I can't there was no big name bands I saw some good bands there that's maybe like uh uh um uh shit uh Paw. They weren't punk. They were like. Uh, yeah, this is this is after my Southern. Time. I don't know. I don't know how you describe. Um, or yeah, I can't. Mule. I think I saw Mule there. Okay. Uh, these are weird bands. Not not youth. government mule, but mule. not government mule. No, no, no. This is. Okay. And then I saw a lot of local shows there where it was just 
people yelling into the microphone and playing as fast as they can play. Mm. Okay. Not playing chords that they knew, just strumming as fast as they could strum and drumming as fast as they could drum, which was fantastic for the time. But people since then have learned how to play their instruments, and it's, it's much nicer now. All right, well, should we... Uh... Yeah, I guess we should wrap it up. Let me just... Uh, again, if you're in the Pittsburgh regional area next week on the 22nd, I will be playing live in person at Spirit opening, I hope to God, playing early in the evening so I can watch the beautiful musicians from the New York Modular Society, which are coming to town. Um there's four of them, and then there's. What time does it start? I think it starts at seven. Really? That's early. Yeah. What night? Well, of the there's week? like a million. There's five or six of us playing. What, what night of the week? The twenty second. It's a Thursday. Oh yeah, somebody said something about a show on Thursday. So yeah. Okay. So uh, that'll be a lot of fun. I will be there. I'll play hopefully early. And the only reason I want to play early is because I really want to enjoy. The artists from New York Modular Society, they're fantastic. So if you are in the Pittsburgh area, come down, hang out with me. We're going to watch it. It's going to be super cool. That's great. Um, I said earlier that uh, we do have some new stuff coming out soon-ish. I've been working on videos for a new thing. Uh, Herman's been playing with the new thing. He seems to like it, which Love is it. good. Mm, it's good. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, I showed Herman the another thing that we were working on. I showed him, sent him some mm. pictures, and I think he thought they were a joke. It, like they, he was like, "Whoa, what?" No, I knew it was real. <laughs> so it, it's it's all good, but uh, I think that's all I have. That's the recap. We've been doing this for a long time tonight, so I think we're calling it quits. But thank you very much for hanging out with us. We will hopefully be back next week. I don't have anything uh, preventing that from happening. That will be the night before the show. Um, so talk to you guys soon. Herman, it's been a pleasure to do this with you. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to tell? Mm. What, do you, what do you do? <laughs> I've just been in rehearsal with our dance company a lot and doing playback and planning the next round of performances for our show circles so stacy and i we get together with our dancers like three times a week usually uh monday wednesday and friday we've been teaching a class at pit um which is about um cross discipline uh collaborations between music dance arts and whatever and um we're going to be in new york doing a conference called apap um, so we have shows. We have shows traveling with our company in the winter, and hopefully into the spring. So, and I do uh, sessions occasionally. I have uh, sort of a rotating clientele of hip hop and electronic music and things like that, and just trying to survive. Well, awesome. Well, it's it's, it's great to know that uh, Herman and I stopped doing this for. Probably about six months. Was it that long? I think it was about that. And because there were some health issues floating around. Uh, but they all seem to have worked. The worst of it is certainly over. And hopefully uh, it's all good from here. So we hope to continue yeah. to do this. And um, well, we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. It, it's fantastic. And uh, see you guys soon. <laughs>